بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم this is dr ofran barber and you're watching my youtube channel uh, today's uh, high yield pediatrics uh, topic is on hypoglycemia in neonates uh, in newborns uh, which is very very common please uh, like and share this video and subscribe to my, my channel hypoglycemia or low blood sugar uh, or glucose uh, in the newborn setting uh, in first 24 hours uh, can happen in infants of diabetic mothers. So diabetes uh, is very common in the world, especially the gestational diabetes. And people from South Asian descent, Pakistan, India, uh, and rest uh, Bangladesh, and they are especially susceptible to uh, getting diabetes uh, because of their genetic uh, predisposition and the hallmark the things start with the gestational diabetes and women later on either uh, persist with diabetes or they, the diabetes goes away may come back in subsequent pregnancies and ultimately uh, by the time they are in their 40s uh, they develop permanent type 2 diabetes uh, partly because of overweight status and also the genetic susceptibility. So in the infants which are born to the gestationally diabetic or diabetic mothers as such, uh, so if the diabetes control is poor in mom, large amount of sugar can cross the placenta and go to the baby. So what does the baby do? The sugar or the glucose, it circulates through the blood and goes to the pancreas which uh, has specialized cells called beta cells that make insulin. Insulin is the hormone that helps in taking the glucose out of the blood and storing in the liver and the skeletal muscles. So the more glucose comes into the baby, the more uh, workload uh, comes down on the beta cells. So they become hypertrophied or big to make more insulin. So when the baby is born, come in, comes into this world, uh, these revved up beta cells continue to produce large amount of insulin. As soon as the umbilical cord is cut off, the supply of high uh, quantity of glucose is suddenly stopped. So now the fetus is a newborn baby and is on his own. So he utilizes whatever the stored glucose, glycogen, which is a stored form of glucose in the liver to maintain the glucose level. But the insulin quantity could be profound and can lead to low glucose level in the baby, which can result in the baby becoming weak. And when the glucose levels, some sources say less than 50, others say less than 40 milligrams per DL, they start showing uh, symptoms which is, could be from inactivity, jitteriness, cyanosis, weak suck uh, during the feeding and they become weak, lethargic, uh, pass out, can have a seizure. So the best management is to be proactive, to feed the child right away. Breastfeeding is the best source of nutrition and close monitoring of infants of diabetic mothers in first 24 hours or even longer. Uh, so checking for blood glucose level is the most important thing in these babies. Uh, the other things uh, that could be uh, checked are repeating the blood glucose levels, checking their ketones, growth hormone, and cortisol, because they may point towards the cause of hypoglycemia if it persists beyond the 24, year, 24 hours of age. The infant of a diabetic mother uh, could have problems during pregnancy, during delivery, and postnatally. During pregnancy, uh, the baby uh, could either become too big, so macrosomic, however, the body is big, they have more muscle mass, their liver, their adrenal glands, they become big, muscle mass is more, the bones are bigger, but the face may be relatively smaller, but still it is red, plethoric, 
because of polycythemia, because uh, in diabetic babies, they can have high amount of hemoglobin as well. And face could still be puffy, but still smaller than rest of the body. Uh, babies could die in the intrauterine life uh, because of the severe diabetes. Uh, they could suffer uh, from birth trauma because their face is so big, you know, sometimes they get stuck. They uh, could problems with the uh, broken clavicles, the shoulder injuries, uh, need for cesarean section. And if proper resuscitation does not happen, their uh, blood oxygen can drop. They could uh, suffer from uh, meconium aspiration, which is release of their uh, stools in the amniotic cavity inside the uterus and they swallow it, can cause damage to the lungs, can cause birth asphyxia, damage to the lungs and the brain. So they could have long standing uh, ramifications. And when the baby is born again, their glucose could be low, their hemoglobin could be high, their calcium levels could be low as well. And if calcium is low, they can again have jitteriness and they can have seizures. Uh, they could have problems with their breathing, respiratory distress, and sometimes if the volume of blood that goes less or is very thick, uh, because of the high hemoglobin level, it can cause clotting of the blood in the renal vein called renal vein thrombosis. So those are very, very serious complications. Down the line, they could have problem with the large heart, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or valvular problems. CNS, we discussed, they could have birth asphyxia, cerebral palsy, musculoskeletal, uh, they could have nerve injuries, the cervical uh, splexus, can have damage, they could have problems with radial nerve, median nerve, all those uh, nerves could have uh, problems. They could have a small left colon syndrome and they may not have meconium passage within 24 hours and their colon could be short. And sometimes hypoplasia of the sacrum and lower extremities can happen. So they are not well developed called the caudal regression syndrome in which their sacrum, which is the lower part of their spine, may not develop well, and their limbs, the upper limb, the lower limb, the arms and legs may be a little shorter, which can lead to, the, which is called the caudal regression syndrome. So uh, how are, so these babies, like I said, could be very large, large for gestational age. And uh, other than these congenital uh, problems, uh, they will need assistance in their feeding. So make sure that you monitor their glucose levels every two hours and try to feed them uh, either by orally if they can take, otherwise they need to be on IV fluids to maintain their glucose levels close to 70 to 80 milligrams per DL and deciliter. And uh, gradually, if it is just the causation is because of the revved up beta cells, usually it should resolve within 24 to 48 hours. If it does not, then there could be other problems like uh, problems with the glucose metabolism. There could be a smaller liver size. There could be problems with synthesizing the glucose from non-fatty uh, substances, uh, non-glucose substances like uh, uh, gluconeogenesis defect, there are problems with the breakage of the uh, um, glycogen, glycogenolysis problems, galactose metabolism, galactosemias, and those are screened on the newborn screening tests. Uh, there could be problem with the growth hormone deficiency, which is a very, very important hormone because it helps in gluconeogenesis. Same is with cortisol. So panhypopituitarism or uh, decreased hormones coming from the master or the pituitary gland could be uh, assessed and detected at a young age. Uh, so those are the other causes. And the treatment, of course, would be treating the cause. So first you maintain the euglycemic state, maintaining their glucose levels by either oral feeding, uh, feeding through the IV, sometimes NG tube feeding may be required, and later on isolating the cause whether it is just the diabetes of the mom, which is transient, resolves in 24 to 48 hours, or it could be metabolic disorders, uh, glucose metabolism disorders, protein metabolism, glycogen metabolism, galactose, and those are screened on the newborn screening. Could be hormonal, like I said, like 
gluconeogen like uh, growth hormone deficiency cortisol insufficiency or deficiency and hypopituitarism which is lack of the hormones coming from the uh, master gland uh, which is the uh, pituitary gland uh, so this is uh, overall uh, you know quick management of hypoglycemic in the newborn area so degree of suspicion should be high and checking the glucose levels uh, monitoring them every two hours uh, uh, early feeding and maintenance of feeding and whenever the need arises IV uh, glucose should be administered. The baby should be watched for at least 48 hours in the hospital. Once the child is able to maintain the glucose levels greater than 70 milligram per DL without assistance, then they should be sent home. But if there is persistence of hypoglycemia, metabolic disorders, hormonal disorders like growth hormone, cortisol insufficiency uh, should be considered very 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 rarely tumors of the beta cells like insulinoma uh, there could be back with Weidman syndrome nasidioblastosis both those syndromes have hypertrophy hyperplasia of the beta cells that make insulin and if there is too much of insulin then they because of some gene defect they would need uh, treatment with specialized uh, medications uh, uh, that will maintain the glucose sometimes surgery uh, could be needed and that we can uh, discuss in uh, another topic uh, please uh, like and subscribe uh, uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel and you can leave comments if you want to learn on any other topic I'll continue to make high yield pediatrics videos uh, best of luck uh, may Allah protect us all. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Thank you.